we see some of the treatment Jamie has faced in Outlander Book 1, Chapter 35. Claire and Murtaugh find a way into Wentworth Prison, giving them the chance to formulate some sort of plan to rescue him. Will it be in time? Here's our breakdown of Outlander Book 1, Chapter 35. This is certainly not an easy chapter to read, especially towards the end. We get some of the details of the things Jamie has faced while in Wentworth Prison. However, it's told only from Claire's point of view. The show offered something a little different. Instead of Jamie later telling Claire what happened, the series shows us the events. The penultimate episode of the season only gives us a little look at the events, with the finale going back into the details of what Black Jack Randall did to Jamie once Claire left. While it is a difficult chapter to read, it's an important one. This whole chapter sets up the rest of the book. It also sets up Jamie's deep hatred for Black Jack Randall. In fact, it sets up Claire's deep hatred for the man. They both would have already hated him, but this is the moment where there's no redeeming the man in their eyes. The ending to the chapter also sees Claire literally fight for her life. It's not against Black Jack Randall, though. It's a scene that was completely cut from the show, likely for logistical and budget reasons, but we'll get into that during the show breakdown section. This chapter is a long one, at more than an hour and 20 minutes on Audible. However, it's packed with information and emotion. It's also the longest of all Part 7, which is starts for us. Just the Outlander chapter. We pick up shortly after Rupert and the others agree to join Claire in the fight to save Jamie from Wentworth Prison. Claire is at the prison, visiting Sir Fletcher, who is the commander at the prison. It seems he's a fair man as later we learn that he wouldn't be happy about the way Black Jack Randall has treated Jamie. However, there's no way that Claire could go to Sir Fletcher about the mistreatment. How had she found Jamie in the first place? More on that in a bit. First of all, Claire needs to learn where Jamie is likely to be kept. She wants to speak to Jamie, pretending to be a close family friend. Fletcher doesn't want that to happen, viewing Jamie as too dangerous of a man. However, he does agree to send Claire away with Jamie's belongings. Usually, they'd be sent on to the family but Jamie refused to tell Fletcher anything about his family. Fletcher also agrees to Jamie writing a letter to his family. It gives Murtaugh and Claire another reason to go back to Wentworth Prison. Once out, Claire relays everything to Rupert and the others. It's Rupert who finds out more details of the prison, and of Sir Fletcher. It's all thanks to playing cards with the prison guards in another inn. This is all the information they need to bind Murtaugh and Claire some time to find out where Jamie is being kept. Murtaugh leaves Claire with keys to search for Jamie, who has been taken to one of the deeper dungeons. There, Jamie has been mistreated. His hand has been smashed and broken and Jamie's hands had been bound at some point. Jamie does help Claire try to get the manic call off his ankle. It's the type that should sprain open with blunt force against a piece of straight metal. However, Claire accidentally catches Jamie's ankle, knocking him out from the pain. Black Jack Randall turns up with an orderly. Of course, it's him who has removed Jamie from the prison cell of other men, men who Claire allowed to escape. After a fight with the orderly, knocking him out and likely killing him, Jamie realizes he can only do one thing, he can protect Claire. He offers himself to Black Jack Randall as long as Claire is allowed to go free. He also agrees not to say anything when it comes to the gallows since this is something Black Jack Randall would fear. Randall sticks to his word, taking Claire out. He does want to know who she is though, suspecting that she's a Jacobite and probably linked to Love It. However, Claire tells him that she's a witch and curses him by telling him the date of his death. He believes her. When she's thrown out of the prison. She's at a different part of the building to where Murtaugh and the others will be waiting for her. She has to get to them, which leads to her being attacked by a wolf. Fortunately, she knows enough about dogs to protect herself while she fights this one off. She manages to kill the wolf but realizes there will be others. Just as she's being surrounded by other wolves, someone kills two with arrows. She's saved by a man in a bearskin cloak which is where we leave her in this chapter. Foreshadowing in this Outlander chapter. The clear foreshadowing is Black Jack Randall's death. Claire remembers the date of his death from Frank's genealogy charts. However, 
This makes it clear that the Battle of Culloden is sure to happen. I think it also foreshadows the mistake of believing that Black Jack Randall has been killed in the prison when the cattle run in. I can't remember now if in Dragonfly and Amber Claire and Jamie believe Black Jack Randall to be dead. This could have just been a show thing. I'll find out when I reread the novel. Another element of foreshadowing is that Lovett will send some men to help with the Jacobite cause. Maybe not him directly, but he'll allow some men to fight with Jamie's. And also Claire and Jamie will turn to Lovett for some help. When real history is considered, it makes sense to foreshadow this. Lovett was a Jacobite. I also get a sense of foreshadowing of Jamie at Ardsmere. Fletcher says that Jamie has been kept in chains the whole time that he's been in the prison. He's a dangerous inmate. However, most other inmates aren't chained. At Ardsmuir, Jamie is the only one left chained because he is considered the leader of the rebellions. There's another element of foreshadowing for Voyager. Claire notes how Black Jack Randall has a smile that she once loved on Frank. Now she's disgusted by the smile. Earlier in the books, she mentioned how she found it hard to distinguish between Frank and Randall because they were so similar. Was this foreshadowing that things would never be right between Claire and Frank? Would she always see Black Jack Randall in him? There are also a few moments when Claire is sick and after fighting the wolf, she falls asleep for a little. These are foreshadowing her pregnancy reveal, I'm sure. Connecting to the TV series. A lot of the chapter was used for the TV series. The only part that wasn't was the ending. We didn't see Claire fight off the wolf. I'm sure the reason for that was more about the budget. Trying to do a CGI wolf wouldn't have been realistic. It links to the reason Jamie didn't fight a real bear in Outlander Season 4. In Season 5, a CGI buffalo was used, but many fans commented on how it didn't look real. Could you imagine the comments back in 2014-15 when CGI wasn't as good? So, it makes sense not to use the wolf part. It wasn't all that necessary. The focus needed to be on Wentworth Prison and saving Jamie. What we did get was some invention to see what Jamie had been through. Instead of leaving too much to the imagination or having to have Jamie tell us, we were shown it. It was graphic and this part of the show is definitely difficult to watch, but it was an important invention for the series to develop this storyline. We could feel everything Jamie did. The rest of the chapter played out as it did in the book. Claire saw Sir Fletcher. Rupert found out the layout of the prison, and Claire went back under the pretense of the letter to get to Jamie. The only difference in this part was Claire leaving a door to the prison unlocked so they could go back in for Jamie. That would have been to shorten the discussions of getting back in and possibly due to the layout of the building used for filming. What did you get during your reading of Outlander Book 1, Chapter 35? Share in the comments below.